I am Anil Kumar and in this video we will learn how to sketch a rational function. Now in these set of videos I have taken 10 examples. They are all of different kinds and they will give you good understanding of different strategies which could be adopted to sketch accurate graphs for the given functions. Now here we have function x square plus 1 divided by 4x square minus 9. One of the critical things about this function is that this is an even function. I hope you remember what is even function. Let us find what is f of minus x. So f of minus x will be minus x whole square plus 1 divided by 4 times minus x whole square minus 9 which is same as x square plus 1 divided by 4x square minus 9 which is f of x. So if we have f of minus x the same as f of x that means the function is even right. So what we notice here is that the function is even. Now this is a very important characteristics once you know that the function is even then it is symmetric about y axis that really means it is symmetric about y axis right so that is very important to understand now let's begin with uh, the other important things in sequence so first thing we should look for is x and y intercepts right now if I substitute x equals to 0 then I get f of 0 which is y intercept so let's find y intercept first so that is f of 0. So if I substitute 0 for x, I get 1 over minus 9. So that is my y-intercept. Now, does this function has any x-intercept? Let's try to find out. What is x-intercept? For x-intercept, numerator should be 0. That is to say, x squared plus 1 equals to 0. Well, it is never 0, right? So it is never never equal right so we can write it as never zero right so that means there is no x intercept so that is very important to understand we do have a y intercept which is at 0 1 over minus 9 but there is no x intercept remember that part right so these these are important informations which will help us sketch a great graph so let's uh, substitute or let's put these values on the graph and see what we have gained so far. So one we have found that we have a y intercept which is at which is negative, right? So that means somewhere here, somewhere here. Let's say this is minus 1.9 and third it is even. So if that is the function f of x and this is x, the function is symmetric about this axis, correct? Let's move on and find horizontal and vertical asymptotes. Since the degree of numerator and denominator is same, we expect horizontal asymptote. So horizontal asymptote for the function is y equals to ratio of the leading coefficients, which is 1 over 4, right? 1 over 4 is a horizontal asymptote. Let me sketch a line 1 over 4. So my sketches, as you know, are not to the scale, but they'll give you an idea of how the graph should look like. So that is, uh, let us say, at y equals to 1 over 4. So this I'm saying is at 1 over 4. Okay. Let us also discuss how does the graph approach this value, right? That is to say, if I write a value which is, uh, let us say, f of uh, minus 100, let us say minus 100, then what do I get? Do I get a value which is more than 0.25 or less than 0.25? This is what we are going to check. So we have uh, minus 100 square which will be, okay, I can write 100 square itself because minus will make it positive, plus 1 uh, equals 2 divided by, uh, within brackets, let me write 4 times let's say 100 square because minus 100 square is going to be positive right so minus 9 so both plus and minus 100 will give me uh, a value which is uh, 0 0.250 something right so it is more than so I can write this as more than with a plus here 
I hope you get this, right? So when we do either minus or plus 100, we get positive. I mean, we are approaching from above, right? So, so I could say that this graph is kind of approaching like this from above. So that is the end behavior also which we talk about. So how does a function's graph approach horizontal asymptote? Easy way is substitute a large negative and positive value. Here both are positive, slightly more than 0 0.25. 0 0.25 is the horizontal asymptote, right? So that is how it approaches. We have y equals to 0 0.25 as horizontal asymptote. Now, let us see vertical asymptotes. So vertical asymptotes is when denominator is 0. That is to say 4x squared minus 9 equals to 0. That gives you two points for x, which is x equals to 9 divided by 4 square root or plus minus 3 over 2, right? So 1.5. So plus minus 1.5, let me write plus minus 1.5 is the vertical asymptote for us. So let us sketch the two vertical asymptotes. And uh, let's say these are vertical asymptotes for the function. At, this is at minus 1.5. Let this be plus 1.5. Okay. Of course, the function is symmetric. So these are exactly at the same distance. Okay. It may not look like since my sketches are kind of not accurate, but they give you a fairly good idea of how it should be, right? Now, once you find vertical asymptote, good idea to draw them. And now, let us find behavior near this asymptote, right? So, so next step is behavior near vertical asymptote right so that is to say we will take test points on either side of these asymptotes and see how the graph approaches does it go to plus infinity or minus infinity right that is the whole idea so we'll check for uh, points near uh, 1.5 first right so let us check so here this is minus so a point which is on the left side of minus 1.5 could be minus 1.6, let us say. On the right side, it will be minus 1.4. So we'll check on these two points, whether it is negatively large or positively large. So if I substitute minus 1.5 here, now that minus 1.6, I mean, uh, which is on the left side, then what I find that the denominator is going to be positive, correct? And numerator is also going to be positive and therefore the function approaches to positive infinity right so this is how so it is positive infinity however if i substitute minus 1.4 in my equation i will approach minus 1.5 means will make the denominator negative since 4 times 1.4 square minus 9 is going to be less than uh, i mean it's going to be negative so this part will approach towards negative infinity. So this is negative infinity for us. Similarly, let us test uh, the points near the other asymptote. Well, from even symmetry also, you can say, so I'll use even symmetry principle. And I say even symmetry means this should be kind of like this. You get my point, right? So I'm saying it is even symmetry. So that is what I should be getting, right? Or you could test it out at 1.4 and 1.6. So at 1.4, you will find this to be approaching negative infinity, 1.6 approaching positive infinity. Now at this stage, you kind of get your graph, right? Now, we will actually do first and second derivative also and analyze for local maximum or minimum and even concavity. But here, what you see from this is that from the characteristics I could actually sketch the graph this part is very clear kind of like this right this part is also clear kind of like this and here we are expecting a graph since we know this value right it's kind of like this it is symmetric and there we are expecting a local minimum right okay but we will calculate right so let's find the first derivative and see whether do we get local minimum at zero or not but that is the graph which we are heading towards right it's always a good idea to see where you are heading while you're sketching your graph so let's find the first derivative of the function 
first derivative is denominator square. So the denominator square is 4x square minus 9 whole square. Derivative of this is 2x times 4x square minus 9 minus the first term x square plus 1. Derivative is 8 times x. Right? So that is how you get. We can actually simplify this to simplify let's actually multiply and then simplify it we get 2 times 4 is 8 x cubed minus 2 times 9 is 18 x minus 8 x square times minus 8 x minus 8 x divided by 4 x square minus 9 whole square right and that gives you uh, I'm sorry, this is also 8x cubed, right? This is also cubed when you square in this. So 8x cubed minus 8x cubed is 0. Minus 8x square minus 8x gives you minus 26x over 4x square minus 9 whole square. And therefore, you do get a critical point at x equals to 0. Do you see that? And the other two critical points are at plus and minus 1.5 correct so we do get critical point at 0 so from here we can say that the critical number number is at x equals to plus minus 1.5 that is from the denominator and at 0 so now let us analyze the critical points so what we have here is three critical points first one is at 0 the others are at plus minus 1.5 right so these are the three critical points for us 0 minus 1.5 and plus 1.5 let us take test points test points could be minus 1 plus 1 2 and minus 2 right? so now we are trying to analyze the first derivative if I write minus 2 in the first derivative numerator will become positive however denominator is always positive do you see so we did, need not worry about the denominator the square makes it positive so we'll check only the numerator so if i write minus 2 for x i get positive value positive will mean that the function will be increasing in this part and then if i write minus 1 then again it is positive that means it's also increasing in the next interval if I write 1 for x, it will be negative, that means decreasing, and then for 2 also, the function will be decreasing. It clearly indicates that we do have a local maximum at 0, right? So, at 0, we have local maximum. The value at 0 we found was minus 1.9, so the value is 0 minus uh, 1 over 9, right? So, that becomes the local maximum. Now with that, we can actually sketch the graph and, and complete the sketching part. So this is minus 1 point, I mean minus 1 over 9. You could actually continue and find the second derivative also, right? And then check for concavity. Since there are no point of inflections in this, I'm not doing it for the particular video in question, right? So, so what you could do is you find the second derivative which is second derivative of this will be start from here that will be equal to denominator is 4x square minus 9 to the power of 4 derivative of this which is minus 26 times 4x square minus 9 whole square minus minus 26 let's write minus 26x times derivative which is 2 times 4x square minus 9 times 8x, the derivative of inside function, right? You can, of course, simplify this. And once you simplify, you will get your critical points. Analyze those critical points. They will give you that the function is concave up in this portion from minus infinity to this and concave down from minus 1.5 to plus 1.5 and concave up between minus 1.5 to infinity. So you can simplify this and get your result. 
as far as this increasing and decreasing is concerned we actually get a clear idea from the first derivative also when we say that the function is increasing from minus infinity to minus 1.5 that is how it is do you see that here also it is increasing it is increasing and then decreasing decreasing and then this part is also decreasing so that shows decreasing so in this particular case we need not do the second derivative you can actually save your time so first derivative actually gives you all the required information and a same accurate graph can be drawn without doing second de derivative for this particular question so that's kind of important but if you want to further investigate you are welcome to do it thank you and all the best.